I'm an emergency medicine resident. In my work, I see that time and health are our most precious assets, and we often don't appreciate them until they're depleted. I believe that the key to a healthier society is also a more just and equal society. And my interest in health and social justice has taken me from my parents' home in Calgary to the remote Himalayan Spiti Valley, to rural Nicaragua, to Vancouver's downtown east side, to England, and most recently, Montreal. But I stepped outside my clinical training this year because I realized that clinical care, while important, is maybe 20% of what contributes to my patient's health. The other 80% is the health ecosystem. It's the broader social and cultural determinants of health. And I want to share a story that illustrated that for me. I want you to imagine that it's midnight in the emergency room. Joe is your next patient. Everyone knows him because it's his 29th visit this year and it's only March. What brings you in today, my friend? Hit and run, doc. Need a few stitches. His voice is drawled and the smell of alcohol hangs on his breath. What have you been drinking this time? Oh, the good stuff. None of that Listerine today, Doc. I got 20 bucks from that last driver. Joe earns his living by jumping in front of vehicles outside the emergency room and then offering not to call the police for a price. He always has a smile and a story. So you suture him up, you give him a sandwich, and discharge him. Now imagine your next night shift. The paramedics drive in, sirens blazing, with an unrecognizable trauma victim. Middle-aged hem middle -aged man with hemorrhagic shock, traumatic brain injury, flail chest. The list of injuries continues. What was the mechanism? Hit and run, dragged by a truck for two miles. Do we have an ID? It's Joe. He died that night in our trauma bay. I've been trained for trauma and resuscitation. But stories like Joe's have made me realize that in spite of my training, I'm often ill-equipped to impact my patient's health. Each time we saw Joe, we treated him and then discharged him to the same environment that would inevitably lead to his returning. It's why his story haunts me. Because no matter how skilled I am as a clinician, I can't suture poverty, prescribe a home, cast a broken school system, or treat the intergenerational trauma that manifests itself in our emergency room. I work in a system where the ingredients for health are inaccessible for many of our neighbors. And I truly believe that good health is one of the most precious gifts that we have in life. And I think we can all help address the inequalities that contribute to poor health in our own ecosystems, regardless of our field. So how do we do it? We need a new paradigm. We need to apply a health lens in all of our decision making to ask, how does this impact the health of my family, my neighbors, and my community? In the policy world, we can't just think in terms of economic growth and GDP anymore. All policies impact health, and it's the one thing money can never buy or replace. 